So today I want to go into plot a bit more. I want to go into how to build a plot structure for a mystery story. So after last time what I'm left with is basically an outline in the form of a beach sheet. I took all the things that I worked on in the last videos and combined them into this bullet point form of an outline where basically I split it into the six parts that I have and I also defined the driving questions for each part which are what the reader is asking themselves or ideally would be asking themselves in reading those parts and then when they get answered before they then lead to the next driving questions for the next part. So this is an outline that you could already use as your outline for then writing the story but what I want to do now is to go and flesh it out much more in detail, have summaries of all the scenes. That is why today what I want to apply is a method from James Patterson's masterclass which is on outlining and he applies a very detailed outline for his stories and that's the ideal kind of outline that I need for this situation that I have right now because basically what I want is to have the story in terms of the details for each scene figured out so much that it's very easy to write it rather quickly and have it written within a month. That's basically the promise that his masterclass to a degree gives when it comes to writing your story is that when you apply his outlining method you can write your novel much easier and much faster. So let's try it out and see if that's actually the case. So this outlining method really focuses on having your story written as fast as possible by focusing on really just having all the details of the story written out as quickly as possible rather than focusing too much on the sentence or getting it perfect. For Applying this outlining method, what I'm using obviously is here this whole work that I did already when it comes to figuring out what my story is, right? But you don't necessarily need that much detail. But I would suggest when you want to apply this outlining method, you should have a pretty clear idea of what your overall story is going to be and also who the character is and what the main plot event is. Just because it is somewhat character-driven approach and you do need to have those two elements to be able to actually apply this outlining method. You'll see why in a moment. So I took James Patterson's masterclass and aside from the videos and the masterclass itself what you get is a course book and also a template of one of his stories and the outline he did for that story. So basically what we're looking at here what you can see this is the course book that you get for the outlining part and this is what the template looks like. So James Patterson is very well known for being a very prolific writer who produces a lot of books fairly quickly and his outlining method the one that we're looking at today is really his main method for being able to produce so many books so quickly and it's not a method that is going to fit everyone. It's not a method that I personally would want to incorporate into my writing process in the sense that I don't want this to be like my main approach because it is a very automatization focused kind of approach I feel and also because I get the sense that if you do apply it the way that he does, you might get stuck with being very superficial with your stories. So what I want to do is basically apply it for specific writing problems and situations because for that I think it can be a very handy and very useful tool. I wouldn't make it my overall tool but I would use it when I have certain situations where it's very fitting and this situation that I have right now is exactly that where basically you have some material already and you want to get your first draft written fairly quickly and you are comfortable with using outlines in the form that we're going to apply here. So just keep that in mind when it comes to this method because it is a rather extreme method to a degree because it is very specific and very much focuses on the outlining that it will not apply for everyone and personally I think it doesn't even apply for specific types necessarily, it might just apply for specific writing problems. So how the method works overall is basically that he has his story idea and then he goes and writes a summary of the scenes that make up the entire story. The scenes are basically the chapters and each scene drives the plot forward so that in the end he has basically a book made up of chapters which are each a scene 
depending on how long they are, they vary a bit, but that it's really just kind of just plot relevant stuff and every scene drives the plot forward and because of that it's fast paced and should be thrilling and so on. And what he does is he starts from start to finish writing the summary of each scene and when he gets stuck or doesn't know something he might write just shorter summaries or he jumps the scene completely. When he gets to the end he either puts it away or starts right away from the beginning again and then circles through it again and this time fills in more of the details that he comes up this time and he tries to be very loose when it comes to what could happen you know be very creative try out outrageous kind of scenarios and then maybe in a second or a third loop he then dies stuff back or takes it out and so on so what he does is basically he builds the outline in constant loops of start to finish and adding details and details until he's happy with the outline and that might take up to four months and then when he's done with the outline, he's basically so ingrained in his story that he then can go and write the story very quickly because in a way he kind of wrote it several times already, right? So that is the overall method. And then when it comes to the more detailed instructions on how you can apply it yourself, there aren't that many because he seems to be really just going and telling himself the story over and over and figuring out the story as he does that. But there is one more detailed instruction when it comes to how to apply this outlining method and that's the one that we're going to look at now and that is to make the scenes character driven. For example, if you take here this second scene in his outline, Nora is the protagonist in this scene and she's being proposed to, right? What he means when it comes to focus on having a character driven approach when summarizing these scenes is to either have your protagonist do something or have something happen to them. You want each scene to have something happen that is plot relevant and he starts with the character and what could happen to them or what could they be doing so that he is really always making sure that it is plot relevant and that it is linked to the character. So that's something that I also tried to apply very much when it comes to applying this method. So here I also started with my second scene because obviously I have the opening scene and as you can see what I have here is that after the opening scene this is the first scene where we see Alex having to take his own action. So in the opening scene something happened to him and he had to react and now in the second scene he has to start the investigation and the first thing that he does is very straightforward having to call all the people that went missing or having officers go and do house checks on them and basically trying to figure out if somebody has returned and what is going on right and I tried to write this scene because I didn't really know that much about what actually happens in the scene I had like those two ideas in terms of he's basically calling someone right or he's trying to figure out if they have returned that would be kind of like my own first idea of what I would be doing in his situation if I had to solve this case and then also having an idea for how he feels and I really just wrote it down in summary form so summary form it's a bit a mix of just telling yourself the story so really just writing a summary of what happens in the scene and also putting in dialogue or description when he knows it already but it's really the writing technique of writing a summary that we already talked about once that he is applying here when it comes to writing his outline. Now while it helps to always focus on Alex when writing the summaries and figuring out does he do something or is something happening to him, from there I didn't really know how to go about it other than that, right? Because there weren't really more instructions on then how to flesh out the scene further. So as you can see this is pretty much just kind of like the first thing that I thought of and I haven't really got much detail there yet. Something that I just thought of that I could include here when it comes to this scene as well is that I want to tap in more into who Alex is and use this scene to introduce him a bit more to the readers and one idea could be that when this scene plays out he's basically doing one thing calling all the people that went missing and nobody's picking up and we also see his inner dialogue and his increasing panic when he realizes that this case is worse than the superior said it would be. 
So as you can see here, this is really also what he does in his outlining method, where basically he just goes and tells himself or tells us in the sense of, we hear Alex's inner voice saying this and this, you know, it's kind of like where he really just gives instructions to himself in a degree on what happens in the scene. So this is an easier way to get started when you don't know details of your scene that well yet. Some scenes are much easier to write. You can see some of them, they are much longer in terms of all the stuff that I already knew and others are really just very short because I don't really know what happens in them yet. And that's why the circling method comes into play where now I would go through this over and over again and add more and more details to it and make each of the scenes that aren't that fleshed out yet, give them more layers and what he does in each circle is try to add more twists, more drama, more characterization. You kind of like all those story elements. Now, while I get the overall method and that basically you just have to write through it, right, to get to the details, something that I found very frustrating with this approach, but also with the instructions, especially from the masterclass, is that what they said as an instruction point is that he doesn't focus too much on you know, getting like the description right or stuff like that. If he doesn't get it completely right, he just goes and kind of does like one summary sentence that should indicate what he means. And maybe, probably, because he is someone with so much writing experience and has written so many books, for him, this is enough of an instruction to then know what he needs to do in the actual writing process. But what I found really frustrating, for example, is something like this, where he goes and says, suspense doesn't let up, right? So it's kind of like this summary of he wants to have this scene be really suspenseful and the reader should be really invested in this scene in this moment. But it's just a, what he wants it to be, right? It's no description of how he actually achieves that in the writing itself. And that's something that I found really not helpful for someone on my level, which this masterclass, I would assume, is aimed towards, towards wannabe writers, is that how am I supposed to then go and translate something like this into an actual scene that is suspenseful and stuff like that, right? So there is no real instruction on how he does that. There's really just this instruction point where they say he does that, you know, when he doesn't want to waste time, he basically just summarizes it like that. I'm kind of wondering how he then goes and turns that into the actual scene that it's then very suspenseful. So keep that in mind when it comes to this method. Maybe you want to combine this method with other storytelling theory, which gives clear instructions on stuff like, for example, how to insert suspense into your scene. And so basically what I did in the last week is I went and took my bullet point form and turned each of those bullet points into a scene which will make up a chapter, summarize it as much as I can and add all the details that I could. This is now an outline where I circle through it twice. You would ideally circle through it several more times if you have the time and add much more details so that it becomes more and more of an actual story. And this is really just what I achieved within the one week where I didn't really have much time to do this. I did this on the site. And so that's why this method, it is somewhat time intense. So you, you would ideally apply it by trying it the way that he does, where you have a longer span of time and have the chance to circle through it several times. And maybe also what I did the first time round, because I had the bullet point thing, is that I tried to write out the entire thing in one go, right? I managed to write the first part and then got tired and left it for two days. And then the second time round when I got started again, I basically managed to do part two to six in one go. And I think you can very much see that by how little information there is in the later scenes and also in the middle part. Really the middle part is probably the weakest because it got the least attention so far and ideally I would go through it at least two more times. And so in conclusion what I was wondering about while applying this method was really 
in a way, this isn't really an outlining method as much as it is a discovery writing approach, because you do start with an idea and a character ideally, a plot idea, and then you're just telling yourself the story as you go along, right? And yes, you are circling through it several times, but you don't really do any of the character work, the plotting work or world building work that I to a degree did for this story. You're really just sitting down and basically trying to tell yourself the story and filling in the details. So you can very much use this method as a discovery writing approach. Think of it then as less of an outlining method and more of just a structured discovery writing approach. Because what you would do then is exactly that. You go and you basically for each scene write a summary of what happens in the scene, right? And as you circle through it, you add more and more details. And that's the second thing that I was wondering. Maybe what I want to try out in the future for a different story is to actually try out his method from scratch where I don't have that much detail or a plot outline in that kind of way, but rather go with this discovery approach of starting from scratch. And then as I cycle through it, try to make each of the scenes less of a summary and more of the actual scene. Because if you think about it, he works on this outline for four months. And I was wondering, if you are circling through the story so many times, wouldn't it be more effective to actually write it rather than polishing your outline more and more? So that's probably something that I would want to try out if it could work is to circle through it the way that he does, but each time try to make each summary more into the actual readable scene. Because then as the output of your recircling, you would actually have your finished story or your first draft. And then the third thing is when you want to apply this outlining method in the sense of it being a traditional outline, I would recommend that you combine it with some other plotting, world building and character development tools so that you basically front load the construction part of your story where you figure out your character, your world and your plot. And then when you have like all those input materials, go and apply this outlining method where you then start to try to summarize all of the scenes and how the story chronologically happens. But yes, so this is basically my final output for this plotting series.